I had a request to demonstrate how to use the calculator to determine statistical power. Um, and the only one that I could find that is reasonably easy to use um, is one for calculating the power for a t-test analysis. So this could be useful for us um, when we do our post hoc or pairwise comparisons after an ANOVA or a factorial ANOVA. So once you have discovered you have a statistical uh, significance for your main effect and then you go ahead and do your post hoc pairwise comparisons and then you find that you have either a statistical uh, significance for one of your pairwise comparisons or possibly if you have a pairwise comparison that isn't quite statistically significant but is trending towards significance um, you can use this to determine if that analysis was adequately powered so we need three things in order to use this calculator and again we're typically talking about the comparison of two groups in order to use this calculator so the first thing we need is uh, the effect size or Cohen's D which we learned how to use that calculator uh, in our on-site and so once you have that effect size calculated for your pairwise comparison you can enter that uh, into the first box the next box is the probability level that you actually found when you did your t-test so it may not be 0.05 it may be 0 0.001 but you need to enter in the actual value the actual p-value that you found when you did your t-test so the p-value associated with the t statistic um, in your analysis and Excel will, will give you that value to give you the t-score and the p-value associated with it and then lastly we have to enter in our sample size and this is the total number of cases used um, in the analysis so if we've got two groups of 15 our total sample size would be 30 and then when we once we have all our parameters uh, entered in so let's just say for example we did an analysis in which the uh, Cohen's D effect size was 0.7 and the which is large um, the analysis gave us a p-value uh, of 0 0.001 and we had a sample size total sample size of let's say 24 individuals 12 in each group let me go ahead and click the calculate button and then it gives us a power value now it's going to give you a power value for both a two-tailed test and a one-tailed test. So as we've talked about before, we typically do two-tailed t-tests, um, and this will give us that statistical power value. So the power value is 0 0.03, which is uh, actually quite small. We look for power values greater than 0.8, as we talked about before, as being adequately powered. So in this case, this um, the power value for this particular t-test um, would be underpowered. In other words, it probably does not have a, a large enough sample size. Um, we would probably see need a larger sample size to be sure we're not making a uh, type 1 error. So, but typically what happens is when we have statistical significance, which in this case we probably do, um, but the power value is coming back as being underpowered, Typically, if we see statistical significance and we have an underpowered analysis, if we get a larger sample size, we're probably going to see statistical significance again. Typically, where we get worried about this is, let's say we had a probability value that was 0.07, okay, and we uh, had to accept the null hypothesis, we may say, well, wait a minute, that's, that's really close, that's trending towards significance. And then we go ahead and run the power analysis and we see we have a power value of 0.43 that's again underpowered it's less than that 0.80 value this is kind of a red flag for us to say well okay we just missed being statistically significant but it's underpowered so if we were to get a larger sample size um, chances are we might see statistical significance if we were to do the study again with everything else being the same the effect size being the same so let's say we rerun the experiment and now we use 36 subjects and now we have a p-value of let's say 0.04 with the same effect size we rerun the power we can see it's gotten a little bit better but it's still a little bit underpowered so again 
the larger the sample size, the more likely it is we're going to see that statistical significance if we s did not see statistical significance initially. So again, this is that's the, that's the usefulness of statistical power, and uh, it's a good thing to report um, so that when people read your results, they can see whether or not the analysis you have is is has adequate statistical power. And just to kind of reiterate what the definition of statistical power is. It is basically the likelihood or the percentage chance that you're going to repeat the same result you had um, if you were to redo the experiment. So if we get statistical significance and let's say uh, our power level is 0.48, this is telling us if we were to redo this study, we only have about a 48% chance of seeing statistical significance again. So if the power level is higher, let's say 0.80 or 0.85 or 0.9, that's telling us we have about a, an 80 or 90% chance of seeing the same statistical significant result if we were to redo the experiment. Another way we use the power value is if we take the power value, let's say 0.48, and subtract it from 1, that actually gives us the probability of making a type 2 hypothesis error. So in this case, we have a, a value of 0.48. If we were to subtract that from 1, we get a value of 52. So we have about a 52% chance, if we accept the null, that we've just made a type 2 hypothesis error. So that's the, the other kind of utility of using um, the powers. It gives us those kinds of values that can give us an indication of how appropriate or how accurate our hypothesis decision might be. So hopefully you found this useful, um, and again, this could be another way to kind of give us some idea of clinical significance or the practical significance of a result. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them under this thread in the forum.